All Shepherds Youth Ministry was on track. After six years of tweaking the programs and discerning the direction, Kara, the youth director, was feeling like we were finally in the right place. All Shepherds was still looking for a head pastor. There was a meeting to discuss a proposed call for a pastoral couple, one of whom would fit well in our congregation. During the meeting, the call committee laid out the proposal that we would call both pastors and eliminate the youth director position from the staff. The new pastors would take up youth ministry as well. What I knew as youth ministry at All Shepherds would end. My heart was broken. I could only cry for the loss of a friend and a ministry that I helped shape. In a few weeks, the middle school mission trip was planned and I was to go. But did I really want to go and support the ministry that had been eliminated? No, no, I did not want to go. But wait, I committed to be a chaperone. Roan. I had to go. I had to be there for the boys and for Kara. I had to find God in this mess and find out what God's plan was for me. Several close friends confided that the decision to call the pastoral couple was forcing them to find another place to worship. Is that what I should do? Find somewhere else? Do I stay and somehow put this betrayal behind me? Should I forgive the people in the call committee? In the back of my mind, I knew the easy answer would be to leave the church. But was that God's will or mine? The week of middle school mission camp arrived. Early in the week, Joseph, the boys counselor, Kara and I were talking about the ministry at All Shepherds. Kara shared about the elimination of her position and pointedly looked at me and said, soon, I'll need to know what you're going to do with the church after I leave. You are the best person to support the transition, but I don't want to put you in that place if you don't want to be there. On the edge of your tears, I nodded my head. In the middle of the week, while the rest of the camp walked over to the field to play capture the flag, I took a shower, gathered my pen and my notebook and found a comfortable spot on the rocking chairs on the porch of the lodge. I could hear them screaming and cheering in the distance. Around me, it was quiet. I noticed the giant trees that surrounded the lodge, the clear blue sky, the grass with the path worn in it, the insects flying around. I took a deep breath and exhaled. I divided my paper down the middle. I would record the conversation between me and God to keep myself focused on what I'm thinking and what I hear from God in response to my thoughts. My heart was beating so fast. Why was I anxious or nervous? What was God going to say to me? What was the decision that, the right direction that this would go? Would it be comfortable and easy? Would it be something hard that I really didn't want to do? I wrote, Dear God, I need some help figuring out the direction to go. I trust your direction and know you have a plan. I need to feel your presence because I'm afraid and unsure of what to do. I saw the words from God. I love you and I'm always with you. As I felt the beating heart slow down and peace wash over me, I decided to pour out my thoughts of betrayal and sadness on paper. God reassured me along the way. Then I asked the question to which I needed the answer. What should I do? God answered with love, speaking of gifts I have and how they need to be used. How the youth of the congregation were shook up with the decision and they would need someone to turn to who they trusted. I countered with, couldn't I use my gifts at a different church in a different community? God assured me of God's constant presence and pointed out that I've already developed relationships with, it and with the youth here, and they would need someone to help them with this journey through this time of change in the church and at school. Yes, they needed an advocate and a friend now. I was perfectly poised to do that. Even understanding and realizing this, I was unsure. God, I don't know if I can forgive the call committee for their actions. I'm really upset about losing my friend. God reassured me that being upset was a completely natural response and invited me to consider forgiveness of the call committee when I was ready. All through this conversation, I've been sniffling and tears have been streaming down my face. I finally set aside my notebook and just hung my head and cried. I cried and I cried, wrapped up in God's love and presence. When I was exhausted and the crying subsided, I picked up my notebook and thanked God for being with me, loving me, and giving the direction I asked for. The last night at camp, the boys were filling out questionnaires about where they felt God's presence. Joseph turned to me and Kara and said, we're going to pray for these boys and everything else that's going on here. And he said that he would start and then we, we could jump in. We joined hands and he started praying. He prayed for each one of us and all the things that were going on with us and the church's decision. Then, taking completely off guard, tears started rolling down my face. He prayed for each boy in their lives and I could tell he was winding down and I looked up. Kara was crying too. She said, Joseph, you're going to have to finish it up. Neither of us are in shape to add to your prayer. He finished up and turned his attention to the boys. Kara and I embraced and continued to cry. We finally were sharing our feelings with each other about All Shepherds, the recent decision, and what's next for each of us. 
But then all of the sadness had changed. I was lovingly surrounded by the presence and support of God, of friends, and of the community.